Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 29. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. So he's gone west to east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. Notice how the words, the numbers three, seven, the right times they show up. Why not five? Because God has numbers and a meaning behind numbers. What we're seeing here is what God is laying out is approved for Jacob and for the nation of Israel. Lying by it. In Psalm 23. For out of the well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. So it was a, a kind of protected well. Make sure nothing got in there. Make sure nothing was spoiled that well. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in its place. <clears throat> so all the shepherds would bring the sheep to this place. When all the sheep had been gathered, then they will remove that stone and let the, let the sheep drink. Then when they were done, they would close that stone, close that well, and protect it. Almost a type of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The stone rolled away and the sheep are fed. He said, I'm the water of life. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. He said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said, and he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. Now we're, we're getting part of the story that we've already read. When we read about the servant going for Isaac to get a bride, he shows up at a well. Here comes Rebecca, the one that God has chosen. Here we're at a well again. Jacob is looking for a wife. And Rachel alone, female, shows up. God has sent these two women. I want you to go to a well, and I want you to go now. Had Rebecca, had Rachel not listened to God, where would the story be? She's a shepherdess. She's a caretaker of her father's sheep. And here she comes. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, almost noon. Neither is it the time and is it the time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. So there would be sheep, and later on there would be cattle. You don't have them dwell together. I uh, believe sheep will eat up grass from the very roots. And thus the cows would not get anything to eat. Lo is uh, in verse 8. And they said, We cannot unto all the flocks be gathered together. Until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. So we got to have everybody here first. We can't do it prematurely. There's a set time. There's a right time. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. So she's given a charge. We see John chapter 10 verse 28 played out through Rachel. 
Now, Rebecca came with a water pot. Jesus said, I am the, the water of life. Now, watch this one. Rachel came with the sheep, and Jesus said, I'm the shepherd. Is that interesting? There's a woman at a well that Jesus, she came with her sins. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother. It's in the family. And the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. Well, they're shepherds. They got a lot of sheep. They look healthy. They're well. Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Almost like Rachel was the last one to come. And watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. He's taking care of his family. Taking care of his own. The stone is rolled away and you're getting livid water. Rachel becomes a type of Christ having her father's sheep. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Now this is a family kiss. He knows that this is his cousin. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother. And that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran to tell her father. Just like Rebecca. Once the story played out, she goes home and says, hey. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son. That he ran to meet him. And embraced him. And kissed him. And brought him to his house. And he told Laban all of these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh, family. And he abode with him the space of a month. All right, a month has passed. Jacob is living in Laban's house for a month. And Laban said to Jacob, Because thou art my brother, Ken, shouldst thou therefore serve me for not? Jacob is working for Laban. And one day, um, he comes up, you know, sh should you be doing this work without getting paid? That's interesting. Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Looks like Jacob's been working and Laban hasn't been paying him. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. And the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender eye, normal. But Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Beauty is vain in the eyes of God. Rachel's going to turn out to be a troublemaker for Jacob. And Jacob loved Rachel. And said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, that younger daughter. I, I, my wages will, seven years will I work for Rachel. Put it in the books. Labor. And my return, my pay will be Rachel. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Stay with me. You're a hard worker, Jacob. Stay with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed on him but a few days for the love he had to her all. Oh, it just went by so quick. He just loves Rachel. Seven years has passed. Seven years and a month. And Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. He hasn't had her at all. Not to the seven years. Well, even that. For my days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. We know what that is. So David, I mean David was. Jacob has been marking his calendar. And that date has been circled and squared and outlined. It's time now. Rebecca didn't see her husband until she came to where he was. And he took her into her mother's tent. Jacob knows who his bride is. Knows who the one is. He just can't touch her. To after seven years. Now, isn't that an interesting story? Tribulation period. And Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. 
This is where you get the you know the marriage supper. This is where you get the re it's a kind of reverse reception. The reception is before the wedding. But there's no ceremony here. It's not do you take this bride to be and you take this man to be. No, there's a reception and the marriage bed of the Bible is when that flesh joins flesh. There's no preacher here. There's no justice of the beast to say, do you and where's the rings? So what do you say, you know, is common law. No, Romans 13 says you're to be able to obey the powers that be. And the law is you're to stand before an official person who has been designated by the state to, to ordain and authorize a marriage of a male and female. i got to say that. So the feast is before the wedding. Here. And it came to pass in the evening after 6 p.m. that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him and he went in unto her it's dark she's covered he cannot see who this is and Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha his maid for a handmaid so who giveth this woman at a wedding comes out of Genesis 29 verse 24. I know it's the handmaid, but look up. And it came to pass that in the morning, 6 a.m., behold, it was Leah. Now, I'm going to try to be clean here. Because Leah has to not make a sound at all and they are having marriage bed relations. She cannot moan and she cannot groan. Because she will not sound like Rachel. She was ordered by her father, Laban. Don't you dare. Don't you even think about making a sound. Not, not, can, I, he's in love. He's getting his night with his bride. And it's not to, when the sun comes up, I, ah! What on earth is, what is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore thou hast beguiled me. Be not deceived, Jacob. Whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. Are you ready? And Laban said, it must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Now let's go to 25, 27. Laban doesn't know what he just did, but the Bible shows us. Chapter 25, verse 27. And the boys grew. He's a, he's, Esau is a cunning hunter, a man of the field, the world. Jacob was a plain man, like Leah, dwelling in tents. That's where he is right now. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Re Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob saw it pause, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob, Sell me this day thy birthright. Esau said, Behold, I am appointed to die. What profit does this birthright do to me? Jacob said, Swear unto me this day. And he sware unto him, and he sold his birthright. And at the end of verse 34, he despised his birthright. Laban says to give the younger before the firstborn birthright, even of a daughter. So let's look at chapter 27, verse 18. 27, 18. Let's watch Jacob read. He came unto his father and said, My father. He said, Here I am. Who art thou, my son? Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. He lied to his father, right? So his, he lied to his father about the firstborn, correct? So his father-in-law lies to him about the firstborn and gives him the firstborn. 
when he was expecting Rachel the younger. Isaac is expecting Esau, he got Jacob. Jacob is expecting Rachel, he got Leah. Didn't God mess it all up for him? How's it feel, Jacob? How does it feel to be deceived? You deceived your father, your father in law just deceived you. How's it feel? Oh, you gave me the wrong one. You were the wrong one to your father. Had you trusted me, Jacob, I would have taken care of it another way. Because God would have to allow Jacob to do it because Esau did, and it was recorded in the Bible, he sold it. Now, I don't know. Maybe he would have had Esau killed that day when it went on. I don't know. But God would have stopped Jacob, I mean Isaac, from giving Esau that blessing. Because it was Jacob. But how's it feel, Jacob? And we got to work and look at our own lives, and even my own self. Look at things that happened to me. I look back and say, Lord, I did that to somebody. And it remind me, Lord, if that's not under the blood of Jesus Christ, I do put it under the blood now. And hey, I did it. It's my fault. I'm just reaping. Well, why has this happened to me? Look back. Maybe you did it to someone else. Fulfill her week. Seven years, a month, and a week. <laughs> Coming up. And, he, and we will give thee this also for the service, which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. You're going to serve me seven more years for the right way. And don't cry foul. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. So this is what Laban does. He fools Jacob. He says, all right, let her be your wife for a week. Then you're going to serve me for another seven years. And I will give you Rachel too while you work your seven year dead off. And it just brings you back to that little dinner party with Isaac. Had Jacob not done that, maybe God would never allow it. Maybe you would have got Rachel right off the bat. Like I said, you got to watch out for Laban too, man. He wants Jacob there for one reason. He's a hard worker. If there's anything you can say about Jacob, many things you can say about Jacob, he is such a good worker that Laban does not want him to go. And Jacob will go give his testimony later on. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. So now he's got four women to take care of. He went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah. Where'd you see that one? Oh, I love my son because of his venison. Oh, I love my son because he's a playmate. Man, Jacob, you're reaping. Does it feel good? And he doesn't even know he's doing it. He's picked up his parents' ways. As Isaac said, oh, just tell her you're my sister. As parents, we got to be careful of our sins because our children are going to do the same thing. Our children will do more of our wrong than our right. My, my parents drank. I'm not going to get into it. It was a miserable life living with that booze. And I told my mother one day, I said, I ain't never going to drink that ever. I'm not ever going to do that. And I grew up and I, I carried Bacardi around. Never mind beer and all that. As an unsaved man, Bacardi. I brought my own wherever I went. After seeing all the miserableness of my family with booze, I did. We got to be careful. And serve with him yet seven other years. Fourteen years for these two women. Fourteen years for one woman. Do you know what great blessing Jacob got over Esau? Quite a, go back and check what that blessing was. He got everything. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated. Oh. Almost like maybe Isaac had a like kind of little hatred towards Jacob. Maybe. Throw in the garbage can if, you, if it's not right. He opened her womb. 
but Rachel was barren. Now Rachel's barrenness is, is, is yeah, she's barren, but she doesn't bring forth the child that brings it to Jesus Christ. It will be Judah, the line of Jesus Christ. But Rachel will bring one of the greatest sons, the greatest type of Jesus Christ. She will bring forth Joseph. And yet her womb is bare. And God did it. Get that. God may be the reason why some women don't have a baby. Satan, we've seen with Sarah, <coughs> with Rebecca, trying to stop that birth of Jesus Christ. And it could be your own ways, your own body health. Your, what you've done to your body may cause barrenness. And Leah conceived and bare a son. Here we go. You ready for you ready for action on the spot? And called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Man, she is just mocking in Rachel's face. I got a baby. That's the same thing that happened to Hannah. Sam uh first Samuel chapter one. You see these stories played out and played out and played out. Now, Reuben means hearing. Now, you say, okay, Jesus Christ, firstborn. How come he didn't come from Reuben? Because Jacob will curse him. And I forget which handmaid. Reuben goes into his marriage bed with one of the handmaids. I forget which one it was. And give to account, even if it's a handmaid, by that account there... God says, even if it's a handmaid or concubine or whatever it is, it's your wife. So Reuben ruins it by a sexual act. And she conceived again. You know, between 32 and 33, it's got to be at least nine months. And bare the son. Now God said, Jacob, you're going to be fruitful. Here he comes. And said, because the Lord has heard that I was hated, he has therefore given me this son also, and called his name Simeon. Simeon means hearing. Uh, Reuben was, I've been wrong there. Re Reuben is see a son. You know, hold up the boy. Hey, Rachel, see this? It's a son. Rachel, you see this boy, Simeon? God hears me. Nah. These two girls are going at it. And poor Jacob's in the middle. Wait till we get to the next chapter, Lord willing. He comes in from the field and it's like, I sold for you. I was like, Jacob, you guys wonder what this guy is going through. Now, before we talk about what happened to Simeon, about that firstborn, right? Let's get to the next boy. And she conceived again and bare the son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me. So... Jacob still loves Rachel more than he loves Leah by her actions and the way she's naming these boys. These boys she's, she's having birth to is calling them out the names that your father doesn't love me as much as he has Rachel. I'll try growing up and say, Mom, why did you call me Reuben? Mom, why did you call me Simeon? Why did you call me Levi? Ooh. I have bore him three sons, therefore his name therefore was his name called Levi. Levi is called joined. Now Simeon and Levi do not get the inheritable blessing of Jesus Christ. Because when remember when Leah was, was raped? Not Leah, um Dinah. Remember when Dinah was raped and he come to Jacob, well, we want to marry her and all that, blah, 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 blah. And Simeon and Levi came and said, listen, if you be circumcised like us, then you can be us and we'll marry with you. You marry with us, blah, blah, blah. They were circumcised. They were sore and they went and killed the entire males of that city. And God says, you can't be in the line. Of no, that's it. You blew it. No. So next. She conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. 
Now, Judah means praise. Now, after Reuben sinned, the next first born title would have been to Rachel's son, Joseph. But God still went in the line of Leah. Because later on we're going to see that Rachel is a thief and idolatrous. But then again, you've got a woman who sells herself whoredoms in Jericho. You've got a Moabitess, Ruth. So we set forth now, we've got four children that will be of 12, and then you count Dinah. And poor Rachel is sitting there, she ain't got one child. Hannah. And Jacob is in the middle of all this. Now, if Jacob did not sin against his father, he would have had Rachel probably right off the bat. And then we would run into, you know, the barrenness. But he was given Leah, and Leah's having the children. They are married. Don't care if it's not the wife. I don't care if you got a drunken stunder in the middle of the night and you woke up with the wrong woman. Who are you doing? You remember meeting with and, and, and doing what you did and she produces a child. The Bible says you are married to that person. The, Jesus at the well with a woman says, go get your husband. She says, I ain't got no husband. He says, well, yeah, that's right. You ain't got no husband. You got four of them. And the one you're with right now is not your husband. It's flesh joining flesh. That's the biblical marriage. Adam and Eve did not have no minister come up and, you know, with a Bible in hand and say, do you both do your will. No. That's where a lot of preachers get in trouble because they know there's other women. But we close with Jacob. He's got four boys. He's got one happy wife and he's got one miserable wife. And that's a great place to end right there.